Hi everyone, so I'm currently in El Guero in Sardinia and it is so beautiful here, so so hot. We're not vlogging this trip, we've taken it as some time out for ourselves but today we're not heading to Rex at the beach, we're just going to be going around the old town of El Guero where we're staying so we thought it would be a really good time to do a Q&A so that you guys can still kind of see where we are and what's happening around us in case you're looking for some summer holiday inspiration for yourself. Um, and then we can also answer some questions that you guys have asked me over on Instagram as well. So let's get straight into it. I can hold Sorry. Okay, for our first question, we're sitting outside a massive church, which you can't even see the top of. It's very pretty. The first question is from Radical.Soft, and it's how expensive is living in London, like renting an apartment, etc. So I think there are a couple different ways to answer this couple things like variables to take into account first is it is going to be more expensive in london than other places in england of course yeah um and london like most cities you would go to has different zones so zone one is um central london that's very very expensive then as you go to zone two zone three zone four it does get more affordable for what london is um, also it depends on the kind of size of apartment you want, the area you want to live in, so there's lots of different variables to how much it could cost. Yeah. We don't mind saying how much we pay on our rent, we live basically on the border of zone 4 and 3. Yeah. Um, and we pay 13 75 a month. Obviously, we're in a lucky situation where we can split that, so it's yeah. much more uh, affordable for us. Yeah, that's a massive factor. If I was working, if I was living alone, I couldn't afford to no. live, have my own place. No way, we'd be renting a room somewhere, yeah, yeah. definitely. Like doing a house share or something. House share, 100%. Um, and this time last year, we were paying 1300 So every year inflation happens, the cost of living in London goes up. So if you think in the last year, our rent went up 75 pounds, it's not so bad, mm. but obviously not ideal like yeah, anything. Of course. Um, the cost of, we do have, an, in, in England, we have a minimum wage, which is like, you said it's like nine pounds. I think it's close to nine pounds, yeah. Yeah, um, but then we also have a London living wage, which it's not a legal requirement for companies in London to pay the London living wage. They do have a legal requirement to at least pay the minimum wage, which, like Alan said, is nearly nine pounds. The London living wage is advised upon, and that's £10.55. That's how much the average person needs to earn per hour to be able to afford to live in London. That doesn't mean they're going to be able to get their own apartment, it doesn't mean they're going to be able to buy, but it means they'll be able to rent a room somewhere. Yeah. Um, I think to buy in London would be a different story. Yeah. You have to have a lot of money. Yeah, most yeah. people need. Most people who buy in London, I'll be honest with you, they probably do get some help from their parents, yeah. or they live at home with their parents and, then, and, then save and, and save. Yeah. yeah. So there are a few ways to do it like that. We do also have a help to buy scheme. But even with that, you know, you're going to be saving for a really long time. Yeah. We both of me and Alan are in a situation where we wouldn't be getting deposit money or anything like that from family. We would be doing it all ourselves. Again, we're lucky that there's two of us. We half it. Um, when that does eventually happen, if it does eventually happen, but we're happy renting for now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's that probably answers mm -hmm. the cost of living in London, you know, yeah. the London living wage. If you get that, that can help. Yeah. But obviously a bit more is ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Kay Monasterio Stereo says, how long do you see yourself working in your current job? I've only been there for a year and a half, so I don't have any plans currently to move on. Um, I work with really nice people and it's a really good commute, so there's lots of yeah. benefits to where I work. and. Do you feel the same? Yeah, and I think you'll know when the time is right to find a new job, you know? Yeah, definitely. I don't think, I don't think it's something where I would put a plan put on a it. Plan on, okay, in six months, in a year, I want to find a new job. It's, you will know, like, I think I'll, I'll know and you'll know yeah. when's the right time to move on. I think so. I don't think we're there yet. We both still enjoy where we are. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next question is from Abs Abs Klein. And she says, any photography slash artistic goals? Mm. You do have some. Yeah, definitely. I feel like photography is definitely becoming more of a creative outlet for me. Mm -hmm. Outfit. And definitely want to do something with actually, like moving away from Instagram because if, you, if any of you guys have looked at my Instagram, I think the last post I've done, it must be what, nearly a year, I think, yeah. since I posted on my account. And I just find Instagram just too saturated. And I feel like you lose the value of your picture. You upload it on 
Instagram, that photo, it gets lost mm. in the billions of other photos there. Mm. And I just feel like you just lose that passion, I feel like, when you upload to Instagram. Mm. Um, I just, I feel like I want to kind of design a website where I can actually show my photography. Mm -hmm. But I think also use Instagram just the feeds, a few sort of pictures through there as well. Mm, that have um, the majority of them on your own yeah, website. Yeah. And you're thinking to sell some prints as well. And maybe, maybe sell some prints because I bought this photo I took in New York, which I absolutely love in yeah. the, in the uh, subway subway station. Yeah, that's a good and one. And I feel like we should get a print on our, in our Definitely. flat. Definitely. I think that's Definitely. something that we want to do as well, actually have our own prints around the flat. Yeah, especially like we, we travel so much, that's such a huge part of enjoyment for life for us. And yeah. so, you know, Alan loves like street photography and architectural photography, and yeah. you're really just getting so good yeah. at it and finding passion and in I that. And I feel like with photography, what what I love about photography is when you look at that photo, you just feel like that was the moment you, you back, captured yeah. that. It just takes you back to that moment. You can feel how cold you are or how hot you were. You can smell, mm. you know, the senses really do kind of rush through me. Definitely, which I like. definitely. For me, I think just continuing the way it's going, doing, you know, photo shoots. So I mainly focus on vlogger photography. Oh, there's a drill now, so you might not be able to hear me. Um, I think it would be okay sound-wise, yeah. right? Um, mainly focus on blogger photography, which is what I mainly do. I love doing that because fashion photography is something I love, as well as portrait photography. Um, but I have done engagement shoots before and couple shoots before, so I think just exploring more areas of actually doing photography as, you know, part of my living on the side of what else I do. So definitely want to continue doing that. It's something I really enjoy. I get a thrill and just so much excitement from doing photo shoots so definitely want to keep doing that okay so the next question is from dana vuyen and it's how do you find the confidence to start vlogging Ooh. do you have any input to this one alan because you didn't like vlogging did you me no i just feel like i don't know walking down the street with loads of people with a camera it's not for me yeah no. I think that's why you're comfortable in joining in today because we're just going down tiny streets that we're walking down the streets where there's only one person it's not the busy streets yeah do you think i think in terms of finding confidence to start vlogging um you just have to do it like the way i see it is like i feel like i don't know if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna be committed to it yeah there's no point in doing it half-hearted exactly because right? then you're not even gonna yeah. have good footage no one's gonna yeah. enjoy it it'll, so. it'll just come across really awkward exactly so. i think it's knowing when you're in a mood to be confident with it as well yeah. like when do you feel good i'd yeah. say start then yeah. but like most things you know like alan said earlier about photography like you just have to do it yeah um you can't there's not there's not going to be like i haven't got a five-step yeah. plan to grow your confidence to vlog you just have to do it yeah it's like anything you know if you don't push yourself out your comfort zone you're never going to develop you're never going to find new things you might like and on top of that you'll never know if you do like it yeah. alan tried many many times didn't like it nope. for months for you months know? and then i decided you know what it's not for me exactly so that might be you as well or you might be like me where you try it and it's awkward at first but then you really enjoy it so yeah. you kind of just have to do it and just remember you're not going to see these people again you know walk past them do what you need to do get the clip you need to get and just know people might look but it's a bit more normal now than a few years ago um and you kind of just have to have like side blinkers on so just even if someone's looking at you just ignore it do what you need to do and you're never going to see these people again so look now we're right by the wall so just on the other side of here is the sea and it is beautiful so this question is from mademoiselle demi and she says, have either of you or your partner gone to school? So I think this means uni. So I didn't yeah. go to uni, but you did. I did, yeah. Um, and then the other question, which is specifically for you, is does yeah. your partner have a job? Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm very fortunate to have a job. Yeah. <laughs> I think this question did make us laugh a little yeah. bit because, um, you know, we're like 28. Yeah. If one of us didn't have a job, we've got something not quite There's going on there. there. I don't know. <laughs> it's either one person's earning a lot of money yeah or something else yeah but maybe yeah. that would be nice right if i earned so much that money nice, you didn't yeah. have to work you nice. lead the I, good I life could be, i could be at home you know chilling just just going around taking photos the whole day you know <laughs> doing whatever you want ideal <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but yeah i've got a job full-time yeah. job we both have full-time jobs yeah. i think something that 
intrigued me and made me chuckle a bit about this question is also just the fact that you know there's so many people on YouTube now who don't have jobs because YouTube is their job and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but what I'm really looking for in people to follow is people who have similar lifestyle to me and Alan where you know like Alan doesn't make YouTube videos but I do this and I work full-time Monday to Friday sometimes Saturdays 9 to 5 30 it's you know it's what everyone else is doing and I really want to find more people who are making YouTube videos who also work a, a job you know I know um, um, Tamara yeah Jarrell like she makes incredible fashion videos and recently started vlogging and she has a full-time career going on and kids yeah. like yeah. it's amazing to see so um, you know if it is someone's job that's really cool as well like who doesn't you know who doesn't yeah. love the idea of being freelance but I think it would be really fun to see more of the mix on YouTube of not just people who are full-time freelancers but also people who go to work as well because there's pros and cons to both definitely okay so next question is from Emma Sophie mm -hmm. do you ever feel pressured to portray your life in a specific way to appear more perfect she's like grinning at us yeah. Um, the camera is on like a really long stick, so it's definitely not incognito today. Um, I don't know. For me, I'm kind of like the anti-perfect because I've just never, like, whenever, even when I wasn't making YouTube videos, I've never felt like that fit me. Like, I'm very clumsy and a bit rough around the edges. Like, I've never felt this need for perfection. I've definitely felt like, like, different because I don't have that or because I don't feel perfect. Um, but I think because I've always already had that within me of those issues around perfection and not liking it I think that's probably helped me not feel like that with being online I do think I probably this is human nature and very normal I think that something that could be similar to this is maybe feeling do I want to really show everything of myself because it makes you very vulnerable and I want to protect myself and I want to protect Alan and our life and not have judgement around that so maybe by doing that it would appear more perfect but it's not come from that it's more for protection for vulnerability which i try to still be vulnerable whilst doing that you can't expose everything about yourself because then you would be really vulnerable but i guess those two things go together i don't know it's an interesting question yeah it is what do you think yeah do you think maybe subconsciously you're trying to or one is trying to appear more perfect well that's what i'm saying is subconsciously do i appear a bit more perfect than i am because i'm <clears throat> protecting myself but do you think being ex exposed to social media yeah that leaves you wanting to portray yourself as being more perfect i think it can for a lot of people yeah. but i don't think it does no. for me okay. i just i really that's why now like i don't follow anyone who portrays that kind of life yeah. because it will make you not feel good yeah. and it's not reality even for them mm. so i think if you can come to a place where you're following people where you know that is you know as much reality as it could be you guys don't see me my life 24 hours a day and alan's life 24 hours a day so you're never going to fully know but if you know that what you do see is reality which it is i think that can really help with who you're following so that you don't feel that pressure yeah. and i think that's something that's helped me not feel that pressure is not following people who are doing that yeah you know and lots of people are doing that and it's not shaming anyone by saying that people know that that's happening and it is the pressures of social media to yeah. appear a certain way before social media it would have been just telling friends things yeah. that maybe weren't full reality so it's always been there but it's definitely an interesting concept mm -hmm. yeah that's good okay this is a good question Alan. yeah how this is from arlene underscore ashley Mm -hmm. if I'm saying a name properly. How do you feel about your tattoos now and would you get any more? If so, what would they be? Okay, it's coming up to a year oh. since I had my last tattoo. I think I did go through a phase of getting a few tattoos in a short period of time. Yeah, we're going through And I do love them and I definitely want to get more tattoos. But I think it's about the process of thinking what you want and where to position it. I think yeah, it's definitely. important. Whereas, because Alan, you don't really know I do kind of know what I want to get. But you don't know where to put it. Where to put it, yeah. Mm. Um, for me, I love my tattoos. I don't even notice them anymore. Like, yeah. you can see my arm is pretty full on the front here. I don't even notice it. If anything, when I see this arm, I think it looks naked. Mm. Like, why is my arm not dressed? Yeah. You know? Um, you just, you get used to it. And I feel like that shows as well that it was right for you. Like, Alan was even saying the other day, he doesn't even notice my tattoos because yeah. they fit me. Like, and same know, for, me, for you, yeah, you I don't notice mine, yours. yeah. Never. Um, so feel really good about the tattoos. I can't see that changing, to be honest, because 
We both really want yeah. to tattoo. We like yeah, yeah. we like tattoos, yeah. you know. I think if you don't like tattoos, I don't know. People always say, "Oh, how we feel in the future." In a few years or something, yeah. I don't know. My tattoos, whether they have meaning or not, you just have to enjoy yeah. life. Like that's what they mean, really. Yeah. Um, and in terms of what I get, want to get next, I think in this space here, which is blank, I'm either going to get some kind of like vines and flowers, or the other idea was to get like a woman who is like covered in vines, who's like naked again, um, just to like kind of symbolise like your body being like a home. You can't get another one, um, and also being grounded within yourself. So that's nice. But I just yeah. haven't. I haven't done it yet, and again, I've not had to touch it since October, yeah. so... But maybe later this year we'll do that. Yeah. We'll see. Could maybe. Yeah. I think also another important factor is make sure you find the tattoo artist that's right for you. Yes. Don't just go to anyone. Make sure you like their designs. Make sure they can actually actually create something for you that's mm. that, that you will really love. Mm. Um, and yeah, just, just stick with them, I guess. Mm, definitely. I think yeah, that's, that's a big factor. Mm. And don't rush into it. Don't rush into it, no. Yeah, because we got a bit excited, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, but we still love our tattoos. We love them, yeah. Um, the other thing is, is like we waited until we were 27 to get a tattoo. Yeah. I think if we'd done it maybe in our early 20s, I don't know, maybe we would still love it. Who knows? Yeah. But I feel like we did it at the right time. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so as you can see, it is a lot later by the lighting. I mean, I don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but it's actually 8 p.m. We spent the afternoon walking around, having a really nice time, then went back to the apartment, um, packed a little bit because we're leaving tomorrow morning, and also showered, got changed, as you can see. And then we've just had pizza and a dinner, which was lovely. Um, so, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. There was another question that I wanted to answer, um, which is kind of a similar question from two people about having like a digital detox, finding yourself, and the pressures of being online. Um, so, I was going to talk about that in this video, but I actually think that that could be quite a good topic to do as its own video. So give this video a thumbs up if you want to see me talking about the digital detox. I might do it anyway, just because it seems like an interesting topic and something I'm definitely finding myself doing more um, and getting more involved with like digital minimalism and things like that. So that should be coming up soon, I'm sure. And otherwise, in the meantime, I shall leave you guys here. I've hoped you'd... Ugh. I hope you've enjoyed coming around Algeria with us for the last day of our trip and I'll see you very soon. Bye!